Hi, I'm Murphy. This is my channel, Murphy's Every Whim, where I talk about books because I love to talk about books. And I love to talk about books because I love to read books. Today's book is Guests on Earth by Lee Smith. And this is a book that I had started to read and then set aside and frankly forgot that I was supposed to do a review for it. So I picked it up, started reading from the beginning. This book is about Evelina Toussaint. Evelina Toussaint is born in New Orleans to a, an exotic dancer. And think of exotic dancer as you wish. Of course, she had men who paid to have sex with her as well as being an exotic dancer. And she ended up having this one paramour who wanted to take care of her more. So he took Evelina and her mother in as to live in their house with his family. And so during this time, Evelina is getting good food. She has nice clothes. She has a nice place to stay. And as you can imagine, the family is not really happy about this. Evelina's mother commits suicide. And as a result, Evelina goes on what you might call a hunger strike. She decided to stop eating. And after trying to force feed her and various other things, the man who had taken them in decides that Evelina needs to go to a psychiatric hospital to get help. He decides to send her from New Orleans to Asheville, North Carolina to stay at Highland Hospital, which is a place known for rest cures, for re-education, for drying out, for getting over an addiction, and various other things. This man, who's wealthy, sends Evelina to Highland Hospital in Asheville, North Carolina. And the rest of the book is mostly about Highland Hospital. And I would say that Highland Hospital is really the main character in this book, not necessarily Evelina Toussaint. And some people might have thought that this book was about Zelda Fitzgerald. And Zelda was a client at Highland Hospital various times while this fictitious character, Evelina Toussaint, was at the hospital. And that's between 1936 and 1948. But Zelda is not a main character in this book. And so some people might be disappointed in that. So the rest of the book focuses on the hospital. And while you might think that this is a story of Evelina Toussaint's life, it's clear after a certain point that she is just there as a way to sew all these stories about the hospital and the people who worked in the hospital, either real or fictitious, and some of the clients of the hospital, real or fictitious, tying all the stories of all these people together is the purpose of Evelina Toussaint's time there. For that reason, sometimes it felt like it was just a bunch of stories being glued together. At the hospital, we get to know the main doctor at the beginning, who actually owns the hospital, Dr. Carroll. Dr. Carroll believes in not allowing the clients to be introspective, to not focus on the things that put them in whatever trouble that they're in, whatever problems that they're having. He doesn't want them to think about those. And instead, they participate in a lot of sports, a lot of outdoor activities, horticulture, dancing, uh, music of various types, uh, visual arts, painting. So they do all these things to get their mind 
off of whatever their troubles are. So whether that's beneficial other than having a good place to go and in a way have a good time. On the other hand, Dr. Carroll does have his troublesome patients, uh, clients, whatever, participate in both insulin shock therapy, electric shock therapy, and other therapies like that. And so his point, I guess, is to get rid of all the things in your mind that might be causing the problem, and then you'll be a better person. Again, it's debatable whether those therapies are beneficial or not. In 1940, in real life, Dr. Carroll sold the hospital to Duke University, who took over, and they had, after Carroll left, they had a difference in the kind of therapies, and they started having group therapy and individual therapy with uh, psychologists and psychotherapists. And so there was a little bit different, but they still had that, uh, you know, the outdoors and art, avocational therapy and occupational therapy were still a big part. Some of the patients at Highland would transition to be part patient and part staff. And that's what happened to Evelina at one point. She actually left the hospital and went away to college and then ended up, I think, marrying an opera singer and then leaving him and she ended up back in the hospital. And one of the reasons that I say that this book is really about the hospital and not Evelina is that we spend very little time on her life outside of the hospital. And that's all told in an epistolatory fashion through her postcards and letters to people of the hospital. That's how we learned that she uh, finished college, started working at the college, but then went uh, off to Paris and San Francisco with this opera singer. And while she was telling them she was married, we're not really sure whether she was married or not. And then uh, when she leaves him, she's in a really bad way and she ends up back at the hospital. It also turns out that her stay at the hospital is financed by the man who arranged for her to go there, and she has a trust fund that is managing her time at the hospital. I think the writing in this book was good in that the story flowed well, the pacing was good. We got to learn a lot about each individual character. There were a lot of characters from the hospital, both from the staff and the uh, clientele that Evelina got to know, and later, when she was in this halfway situation, mostly working at the hospital, and in fact, she was a pianist, uh -huh. she ended up giving lessons and playing the piano for different people at the hospital, you know, for the dance classes and things like that. And so she was living in a halfway situation. She wasn't living on the hospital campus directly in the dormitory, but she was off campus in a home. And so she talked about having to climb the hill up to Highland, which was really hard in the winter when it was icy and snowy. And so she was not living on the hospital campus. Later, when she's a part staff, she also starts having relationships with the people, some of the people in the staff, some of those romantic relationships. The story of Zelda in here is in passing. Zelda comes and goes from Highland Hospital. Zelda Fitzgerald dies famously in a fire at the hospital, and the cause of that fire is unknown. And what Lee Smith has tried to do with this novel is provide a possible explanation for how the fire got started. But really, Lee Smith, she has a long history of knowing what goes on in Highland Hospital because she, her father 
was in the hospital and her son was in the hospital. She knows the area as well. And so she really wanted to write about the history of the hospital. And that's what she's done in this book. And she was also intrigued by the life of Zelda Fitzgerald. But she only tells that part of Zelda's story while Zelda's in the hospital. And a lot of it is fictionalized because she's trying to write a story that gives a plausible explanation for how the fire started. Would I recommend this book? The answer is yes. It's a good story. I may be more critical of it than I probably should be, but I just don't like this sort of story that feels like just pulling a bunch of different stories together and trying to sew them together. The other thing is that if you don't know about the type of therapies that there were in psychiatric hospitals in the first half of the 20th century, then this is a good book to talk about what the patients were like, what they had to go through, what freedom they had, what freedom they didn't have. From my research, it's clear that Smith based the parts that are about the hospital on as much factual uh, history as possible. And for that reason, it's good. On the other hand, I've made a study prior to this of psychiatric treatments in that time frame. And so I really wasn't interested in that part so much. And so in that way, I was bored with it. It's not the sort of story that I like, but it is a good, in a way, almost Southern Gothic type of story with a little bit lighter tent to it than, than some say by Flannery O'Connor or Eudora Welty, but still the Southern Gothic, uh, beautiful stories about the Asheville, North Carolina area, some fun stories about some of the uh, clientele. And I really couldn't find out which of those were real people and which weren't. But um, there were some, some good stories, some good friendships that Evelina had with other people. But Another criticism I have is I just grew to dislike Evelina as time goes on. I just grew out of love with her. So that's my review of Guests on Earth by Lee Smith. It's, a, it's well written. It's a good story if that's what you want. But it's not. If you're interested in a historical look at Zelda Fitzgerald's life, then don't believe the blurbs that say that this is because it's she's there, but really just in passing and not so much as a main character. That's all I have. I hope to see you again sometime. Take care.